Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So today's video stemmed from a comment on the review that I did for the Sin 5 Roscoe and his comment was in regards to the ejection powder that he was seeing coming out of this gun when it was suppressed. Um, I didn't really show any, I don't think I showed any footage of that of the gun being run unsuppressed but we did run the gun unsuppressed today just for the comparison. And so what we had set up, um, I have three different rifles out today. I had uh, this 10.5 built with a Roscoe barrel with a 071 port and then I had uh, two legit Mark 18s one built by LMT it was a Mark 18 motto and then the other one was a Daniel Defense a complete Daniel Defense Mark 18 both of those guns also having the 070 port um, and the conclusion that we come across today was actually kind of surprised me too and in it also kind of cemented what I was talking about before with this gentleman about there's other factors that you have to look at within the system it's not just the port size so what this gentleman was talking about was he was having a ejection pattern of right around one to two o'clock whenever the gun was suppressed with a white spring co which is their standards power spring and an h2 buffer and it was about three to three thirty whenever the gun was being run unsuppressed and he was also stating that he did not believe that um, I don't know if he had tried it or not but he said he did not believe that his uh, particular rifle would run if the gun was unsuppressed with the same enhanced power blue spring coat spring that I am running in my gun so what we did we took all three uppers we ran them on the same lower the same lower with an h2 pws buffer and a spring coat blue spring and we just did a quick ejection pattern test. So we had them laying in the same spot, shooting at the same target, and it was kind of as scientific as I could make it, I guess you could say. Um, all three from GI mags, your standard GI uh, aluminum magazines. And um, I we fired three rounds out of all three in the same spot and then marked where their rounds had actually landed. And I think the results will surprise you too. So this first one was that we did was the uh, Mark 18 Mod O, the one built by LMT with a crane spec 070 port. And you'll notice unsuppressed with a blue spring one, it runs, um, it ran fine. Um, didn't have issues with the gun locking back or anything like that either. And it was ejecting the brass, um, I'd say right around 2.30 to 3 o'clock, somewhere in there, unsuppressed. Um, this is full power M193. It's the exact same. They, every round in that was fired in this sequence was fired from the same box of ammunition. Um, so they're all fired with blue spring coat springs. And the um, Mark 18 motto landed roughly 2.30 to 3 o'clock um, along with the Roscoe 10.5. They landed right at the 2.30 to the 3 o'clock area. Um, the brass was kind of intermingled right there in the same area. And then the Daniel Defense had the probably the most lateral ejection pattern out of the three upper receivers on the same lower again um, running with the blue spring coast spring and locking back on the last round um, all three of these guns used their bolts so mine had my fn colt bolt combo the lmt had an lt bolt and the daniel defense had a daniel defense bolt and one of the common misconceptions about um, the over gassing or the way ports are set up is the ejection pattern is the sole storyteller of how a gun is gassed and it's just not the case. So a couple of things you're going to look for is one, where your bolt tail, your gas ring run, your bolt shoulder run on the bolt itself and the subsequent wear areas in the carrier itself, where they run in spec um, or where they are within spec of each other. And this is where you're going to come with issues with stacking tolerances. Some guns you're going to have a bolt tail run that is smaller in diameter on the lower end of the spec. And then you'll have a gas the run inside the carrier is going to be higher on the spectrum. So you're going to have a little bit of slop in there between the two components. And what that's doing is that's allowing gas to escape out the back end of the bolt downwards into the, mat, the trigger guard and out of the sides of the gun and all that. Instead of keeping it within the system and using the gas to run the system itself. Um, now all guns are going to have a little bit of escaping, but some are going to be worse than others because of the way they're spec and the way the parts are built. And not that there's anything particular wrong with those parts because they're still within spec, but the issue that you're going to run into is you're going to have a little bit of gas seepage there and it's going to have a slightly less efficient run in comparison to some others. And there's no one manufacturer that's immune to any of this stuff. I mean, it's all our stacking is going to be happening with everywhere. It's just as long as it's within the spec, it should be good. Um, so this is something that's actually could probably be seen pretty well in this video between the Daniel Defense and the Mark 18 Mod O, just kind of leaving mine out of it for the first part. 
is that both of these guns with the exact same size gas port had a drastically different um, ejection pattern between the two. And then the Mark 18 Mod O had the exact same ejection pattern as the one that I've got here. And again, that being the Daniel Defense Bolt is probably where I was talking about with the tolerances for that bolt carrier group in comparison to the Mod O and then of course with mine. So don't get hung up on the ejection pattern of rifles. I think it's kind of a dumb argument. It's not really a good way to tell whether a rifle's gassed or not. The better way to be able to tell would be to how far it's actually slinging the brass. I mean, if it's slinging them off into another dimension, um, your, your gun, your, your bolt's moving significantly faster. It's making that shell casing hit the shell deflector that much harder and it's causing it to launch further away. That's a better tell than just the ejection pattern. Um, another thing is going to be is whenever you suppress that weapon, is how much gas are you getting backwards in the face? I've run suppress uh, suppressors on eight and a half inch barrels and it'll just absolutely choke you out with gas. I've run them on uh, 14, five, 16, um, 11 and a half inch guns, same thing, it'll absolutely choke you out. The 11.5 Sons of Liberty barrel that I've got along with this Roscoe barrel, um, I don't really have that issue. Um, I do get gas in the face a little bit with this, not nothing that's manageable and not nothing that's really makes it where I can't shoot it or where it impedes my performance any. Being said, again, guys, don't get hung up on this uh, ejection pattern thing. It's 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 really anecdotal at best, and um, the whole port picture thing that's out for around the internet that's kind of dumb. Now, one thing that I prefer um, over the crane spec ports, the reason that I personally don't like the crane spec ports is in the event that you get into a really adverse environment and you're getting a lot of gunk, the gun's getting dried out because you're going to get suppressed, you're getting a lot of stuff inside the system, what's going to end up happening there, especially if you've got a bolt that's on uh, the, ends of the opposite ends of the specs like I was talking about where it's allowing gas to bleed out and escape, what's going to end up happening with those smaller ports is, is you're not going to have enough gas to actually reliably run the system. Now generally Daniel Defense Mark 18s don't really have this problem, um, but that is just something to consider whenever you're looking at different ports. Um, and also, those smaller ports, um, you're gonna run into issues trying to run a lower power ammunition like um, any kind of steel case stuff. Um, so I know a lot of guys say, well, I'll just run brass through my gun. Well, in the event that the second had to be used for what it's meant for and um, the balloon goes up and you're not able to get resupplies of ammunition, you just gotta be able to work with whatever you can find. Um, if you're scavenging around for ammo and all you can find is steel case and your gun don't run steel case, that ain't really gonna do you a whole lot of good. So for that reason, it's also kind of dumb to go on the lower end of the ports. Um, companies like uh, Roscoe, even Sons of Liberty Gunworks, and a lot of the other manufacturers that are reputable that are manufacturing these barrels, they'll tell you that they do that. And so the guns are actually able to run the steel case ammunition reliably. Um, but again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, happy shooting. Cool. All right, this is a Mark 18 motto with an, a nice armament. It's like an in-between H2, H3 buffer on you. All right.